Hey guys, Trevor Martinez here with the Jim Wills County 4-H Ambassadors. And did you all know that about one third of all food purchased is usually discarded or wasted? And that roughly equals around 1.3 billion tons a year? Now imagine what we could have used with that food if it was unwasted and in our hands today during this pandemic. And probably you all have noticed that during this COVID-19 pandemic, we're spending a lot of times quarantined or in our homes. And another effect is that stores don't carry some products and have placed limits on others. It's quite stressful right now. But today in this video, I'm going to try and teach y'all and help y'all with this stressful time by teaching y'all tips and tricks how to preserve food, how to stretch food, and how to organize it. So, let's jump right in. First things first, let's look in your fridge. It's probably your main storage area that you put all your food in. Eggs, dairy, meat products, and tons more. But ask yourself, is it organized correctly? If not, you're probably wasting precious food. The first two shelves should be ready to eat products like leftovers, dairy products, cooked meats, and more. Clear containers work best because psychologically, if you can't see it, you probably won't eat it before it spoils. Don't clutter up your fridge and remember to use the FIFO method. That means put your newest products in the back of your fridge and move your older products to the front for first use. Raw meats should be on the lowest shelf, sealed properly, possibly in a plate or dish to avoid leakage. Also, when using bags, be sure to make sure the seal is tightly and correctly closed. Vegetable and fruits that should be refrigerated should be in the crisper drawers to protect them from pre-ripening and spoiling. Some fresh produce such as potatoes, garlic, tomatoes, cucumbers, and onions should not be refrigerated at all, but should be kept at room temperature. Produce such as bananas, avocados, tomatoes, cantaloupes, peaches, pears, and green onions give off ethylene gas while ripening and should be kept away from ethylene sensitive produce such as potatoes, apples, leafy greens, berries, and peppers to avoid any premature spoiling. Proper storage of produce will not only save you money but will keep those vital nutrients in your diet that you will need to stay healthy. Not only do we use our fridge to put our food in, we also use our cabinets and shelves. Food items stored here should also use the FIFO method, first in, first out. Move older purchases to the fronts and put newer items in the back. Turn labels to the front for good visibility and be sure to keep an eye on expiration dates. This does involve extra work to keep up with this organizing strategy, but it will help you reduce wasting food. And that leads us to our next topic, stretching the food that we have. Each of us has bought different foods, so there are many options that we can choose from. Most of us know that we can have beans, rice, potatoes, or pasta to our dishes to stretch a small amount of meat at mealtimes. You probably already know that boiled potatoes can be added to taco meat or tuna fish, or that beans can replace your meat as a protein. Rice can be a wonderful filler when used with a small amount of stir fry or gravy. You probably already know too that at least once every week it's a good idea to have a meal of just leftovers. In some families this is called a fridge buffet, duke's mixture night, or feast night. And all leftovers are prepared at the same time and served buffet style. Many times, different leftovers can be even combined to make a refrigerator stew. Another good idea to stretch your groceries is to use things that you usually might discard, like the skin from your chicken or the peels from some fruits and vegetables. Not only are there nutrients in these items that you'll miss out on if discarded, but you'll add bulk to your meal. The outer layers of potatoes, apples, cucumbers, mangoes, and eggplants are edible and nutritious. Even some parts of vegetables that we normally discard can be cut in smaller pieces and used as an appetizer crudity or in a stock or stir fry. Broccoli or cauliflower leaves can even be used in stir fry too. 
Lemon or orange peels can be used for zest or placed in water for refreshing flavored beverages. Chicken bones can be used to make broths for soups or even gravies. Stale bread does not need to be discarded. Make toast, croutons, breadcrumbs, stuffing, bread pudding, or garlic bread out of it. Be creative, not wasteful. If you have no bread, then make your own. Did you know that you can make several varieties of homemade bread products without milk or eggs? Use corn tortillas to make casseroles and make flour tortillas into personal pizzas. There are many creative ideas that you can come up with to expand that dish. But speaking of dish, if you use a smaller diameter plate, then psychologically, your mind will assume the portions you receive are bigger than they really are. Also, eat slowly. Give your brain time to realize that your stomach has had enough. This will not only stretch your food, but will reduce your waistline. There are many tips and tricks that you can use. You just have to do a little research. Now what about the food that you can't use just yet or are about to lose? If those bananas are turning brown, but you don't have the time to make banana bread, then why not freeze them instead of throwing them out? Do you have too many leftovers that can't be used up during leftover night? Why not freeze them? Do you have leftover fruits or vegetables that you are in danger of losing? Why not make jellies, salsas, or condiments from them? The knowledge that you need to can or freeze food properly is all at your fingertips on your phone. Why not just look it up and save that food? And what about the future? How can you add to your own food supply? Why not start a garden right now? In World War II, Americans were asked to grow victory gardens to provide food for their families and to have items to barter with. Why not do that now? If you cannot go out and buy plants, then why not grow your own? Again. The information on how to do this is all on the internet. You just have to look it up and commit to caring for your garden. An average tomato plant will produce between 8 and 20 pounds per plant. An average bell pepper plant can produce between 20 to 30 peppers per plant. Many vegetables can be raised in containers if you cannot plant them in the ground. If you want to have a small supply of eggs and poultry, you might consider raising a small flock of chickens in your backyard. The information on how to do this is again right there on the internet waiting for you. And here is all the resources I used today, plus all the websites I visited for the clip art or the media that you can see in this slideshow. I really hope that the info in this video has helped you all in some way and that you all use these tips and tricks to help preserve and stretch your food. And we can learn a lot from our older generations about this. They've been through tougher times than we have, but we're going to get through this. We're going to be okay. But other than that, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all soon.